this is it. This is the first study. It was chosen by Mr. Schranz. He told me a number. I looked through my database, through my studies database, and this is where it came to. We have 10 of them. We're probably not going to finish all of them. I doubt we're going to finish all of them, maybe two, three, four at the most. Um, most of them are quite difficult. And um, yeah, let's, uh, let's start. I think it's white to move, if I'm not mistaken. So let's try to give it a shot. I think first we should start with candidate moves, obviously. Um, the most, the ones that pop into our eyes immediately are, which ones? Yes. Knight C2. Knight C2? Yeah. To give the knight? Like this? Knight here? That just gives the knight though, right? And then? Well, yeah, but rook g2, and then, OK, I'm going, oops. I'm going to play something like knight c4. Even if I would give you my knight, even if I would play bishop f5, rook takes b2, that's still a draw, right? Rook versus bishop is a theoretical draw. So I don't think that's what we're striving for. And our knight is not under attack, so. I don't see the reason why we would play knight c2. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think that's the first thing we should uh, start calculating. I mean, it puts the king in the center. It kind of traps the knight, attacks the bishop. So, you know, we're looking for forced moves. Of course, that's how we should always start our calculation, our selection mode, right? So king d4 should be the first move. Now black has a lot of options. Bishop a4, bishop a2. Well, bishop a2 can easily be refuted after rook g2. I think that's safe to say uh, the game is over. Bishop c2, bishop c4 don't work. Knight moves doesn't make, don't make a lot of sense. So I think we, bishop d5. Is one. Bishop d1 is another one. Bishop a2 and bishop a4. Yeah? Do you guys want to put them on the, put the king d4 on the board? Or do you guys want to, huh? Yeah, it's, it's nice to see the king move. Try to figure it out from the beginning. Usually, I, whenever I do it, whenever I do it at home and I prepare myself for a tournament, I try to solve it um, from the beginning. And one thing I, um, I force myself to do whenever I solve studies is keep an organized thought process. Very, very organized. And that's going to help you tremendously with your own game, with your own calculation during the game. So let's not jump from one variation to the other. Let's finish one and then go to the next one. Which one uh, do you guys want to start with? Knight b5, bishop c6, I would say. Actually, bishop c6 is losing. Because of what? King d7. Yeah. So if we go here. Everything is forced, and we're going to win the piece. But I think instead of bishop c6, maybe I have to do something like go all the way to h1. Or maybe just attack. Maybe just attack it like this. Let's see if we have something better. Let's see if we have something a little bit more forced. So what he's uh, saying, rook g6, king f7. Rook d6, bishop e6. And I think my bishop is more or less safe. At what, in what moment? 
King F7? Rook B6. Mm. Right, right. That makes much more sense. Um, rook B6. So let's see. Right. I'm surviving. I don't think I'm going to trade. I'm not sure you're threatening anything. Knight d6, king is 6 Knight here, king here. That should be winning. But it's not, is it? King. Somehow I'm surviving. Let's see if we can find something easier. Um, I'm pretty sure it should work as well, but maybe it doesn't. And if it doesn't, then we're in trouble. I think there's some easier path in this position. Yes, Arjun. Knight King D6. Tell me the whole variation. Don't guess. Calculate. That's what I'm saying. Keep an organized thought, uh, thought process. There's actually a variation that goes all the way until the end, and you just uh, could easily see that it's winning because he's losing all his pieces by force. No, rook e3 is actually the right move. Rook e3 is actually the right move. Um, just calculate till the end. The line is as uh, follows. Rook to e3, king d6, knight to b5, king c6, knight to a7, check, king d6, knight to c8, king c7, king takes d5, king takes c8, king c6, threatening checkmate on e8. King to d8. Your rook, your rook is on e3, your king is on c6, black's king is on d8, knight is on b2. And now you have a move that forces the loss uh, of a, the loss of a piece. There's probably more than one option of actually winning that position, but it's the easiest. Yep. Rook e4. King c8 is checkmate on e8. King knight d3 or knight d1, rook d4, and you grab the knight. Hmm? There's plenty of ways to win this position. Uh, I'm pretty sure king b5 as well works, and then just get with the king closer to the knight, and then whenever he goes to d1, because that's, all, that's going to be his only square, I think we're going to get with the king on b3, put the rook on e2, and then king c2 should trap the knight on d1. So let's go, let's say it like this, fuck. I think you have to go here. The knight doesn't go anywhere, and then king c2 and just wins, yeah? But rook e4 is much more elegant and just finishes the game on the spot. All right, let's take it from the beginning because after king d4, probably bishop a4, will be a little bit more resilient. What I want you guys to, uh, to find right now is a setup that wins a piece by force. Yeah. And that just doesn't leave your opponent absolutely any, any sort of escape. Try to trap that, uh, try to tra trap that knight. 
King C3, Knight D1. King B4, Bishop E8, let's say, or D7. Uh, bishop uh, e8, I'm going. Because I want to go to h5. Yeah. Mm, bishop e8, let's say. That's one, one thing about it. Uh, if you're going to give me another move after rook d2, rook g2, knight d1, I'm going to play bishop e8, bishop h5. And I'm going to transfer my bishop on a longer diagonal. At least I'm going to have more space there. So you have to stop me from doing that. The king is perfectly placed on d4, to be honest. Uh -huh. King, let's say here. Knight c2, I take. Oh, actually, no. Knight c2, I go king f4, sorry. Uh, yeah, you want to play knight c5? Good question. Um, knight c4, okay. King f4. Knight where? Mm, be careful. Because I might escape. Am I escaping? Maybe I'm not escaping, but I am escaping. Uh, no, I'm not escaping. Rook f2. So I'm not escaping like that either. Yeah, that's one way. Uh, I think much easier is uh, maybe just uh, knight. Knight e5. Isn't this much easier to have knight d3, knight c5 coming with with check? And that's it. Easy as that. All right. Jonathan's first, uh, first guess, first problem. Uh, is Jonathan Isaacs. Was uh, a boring endgame. <laughs> <laughs> let's, uh, let's, go into mo let's go into a bit more exciting stuff. I have a very nice one for you guys. This is a nice one. Why to move? Right. Right, right. No, that makes a lot of sense. The problem is uh, the king is also a little bit exposed. White's king. And you simply don't have a way out. Uh, I think going back on the C file is the only way. Otherwise... Otherwise you're just walking all the way up. Oh, I'm taking the E7 pawn. Okay. Rook E1. Uh, if you go on the E file, then I'm taking the pawn. And uh, I think this is losing for you. A7, I sacrifice... Well, actually, I even have c6 in this particular case. Uh, but let's say you put your king here. Yeah. Take, go here. And then I think this position is just losing. Play something like c5, maybe even take just, just take the pawn. Yeah, probably not the best. g7 check. Yes. I take it. He, uh, rook e2 check. King f6. Rook f2 check. I'll take that with the check. Uh, and then king b. Yeah, of course. King b1, king takes e6. Yes. a7, rook f8. So I, uh, I managed to, to defend against your yeah. promotion. In this posi in this position, mm -hmm. um, and then what? So let's say rook d7. I go rook e1. E7. Mm -hmm. Or actually even rook a1. I think it's better. And when you go a e7, I go rook e1. I'm okay with giving one rook.
you might be able to actually you're not you're not gonna make a draw no check check I think mm -hmm. maybe yeah maybe it's a it's a draw it's a draw it's a draw but um, I think we can do better than that I think we can try for a win here. Is it E7, rook E1, E7, e rook A7, rook D1? So E7, rook E1, that's just the beginning. A7, rook A1. And now rook D1. How is black going to defend? You have to uh, you have to look at defenses for black as well. Rook a two, yeah, keep going. King b three. Rook a two, yeah. Then he has to go rook a three. Then he has to go here. Then he has to go here. Then he has to go here. That's game over, yeah? That's it. All right. Let's see another one. How about we go on Mr. Herbs, Herbstman? Yeah, Mr. Herbstman. We have to make a draw in this one. Let's try to make a draw. Uh, where? Knight, knight, g5. Knight, g5, uh, first move, okay. I have two options, f6 or knight, d6. I have to defend that pawn. Mm -hmm. If I lose that pawn, then it's kind of obvious it's going to be a draw. So knight, g5. Let's go with this one. Knight, d6 or f6? Let's try to find for both of them. Again, try to keep an organized thought process. Mm, correct. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. That's, uh, that's definitely one way. Also, knight g6, uh, knight g king somewhere, knight c5, and then I take the knight on a6. That works as well. So f6 is not good. Knight d6. We should be thinking about, once again, the first moves. Let's try to go along with the variations that are most forced. There is one in particular we really cannot avoid, and that is Arjun? I have a question. Yes. Is a minor piece versus bishop and two knights a draw? Minor piece versus bishop and two knights? So if you're able to trade two of the no. with the two pawns? I don't think so. That's a good question, actually. Uh, but I assume not. Because I'm going to be able to exchange one of my knights for one of your, either your bishop or your knight. And that should be enough. No, come on, guys. Uh, there is there's one move that cannot escape you. It's not very difficult. Of course, knight f7 has to be calculated. I mean, it's the, for, it's the forced move, and at, at least it leads um, to a variation in which we can add, give a new assessment to the position, yeah? So knight f7, knight x7, knight, knight e6, now king d7 or king c8. Well, actually king d7. Let's look at king d7 as well in that position. Where are you going to go? Mm-hmm. Go on. Yes. Why not knight c5? King c6, yeah. Knight takes a6. King b7. Bishop d3. Knight e5. Bishop b5. 
not king b6, and I, and I take your uh, knight. So not knight c6. We have to go for knight g5. Yeah, be careful, because this is just losing. Loses the piece. So instead of that, I'm going to go king e8. Bishop g6, very good. You're threatening knight g5, so forced move. Bishop c1, exactly. What to do now? Now you have to be really careful. Very, very careful. Where? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's winning. Yeah. Knight d8, king takes d8, bishop takes f7. Um, I'm going to force you to give me the bishop for the pawn. I'm going to advance my pawn all the way until the end, and then it's going to be bishop and knight versus king, which I hope you guys know how to convert. Again, forced moves. You guys should help. No, for uh, knight g7, king f8 doesn't help your cause too much. And it can easily be calculated. Knight g7, king f8, I put my king on g8, and I escape. I'm, not, I'm no longer on that annoying pin, h5, e8. If I manage to escape from that pin, my, I mean, slowly, slowly, I'm going to push your pieces back, and that's going to be a win. Bishop d3 looks good. Bishop d3 is the only move that you guys should be looking at. It's forced. And bishop b5, it's a checkmate threat, right? After all. So, I mean, it has to be calculated, of course. So, the only move is there's knight d8? Hmm? Black's only move is. there is king d7. And that's exactly where the difference with king d1, bishop h6 comes into play. Because after bishop d3, king d7, we have the extra move. Knight to f8 check. With a bishop on h6, that wouldn't be possible. Correct. King e8, bishop, uh, king e8, knight e6. Fine. Fine with me. So after bishop d3, the critical line is... Knight b8, bishop b5, knight d7, always go with the forced moves. Again, knight f8, king f8, that's losing. If you exchange a knight, that's losing. That's losing, yeah. If you exchange a knight, that's losing. If you go knight c5, I go knight e5. If you go knight c7, I go king d8. Knight e6, king c8, my king escapes. Now the key of, of, of the problem comes. Hmm? No, bishop f4, I mean, you have to ask yourself what my threat is. I have threats as black. I'm threatening to put my knight on e5, and then to go king f7. If I manage to liberate my king, the position is winning. No, uh, so you mean knight c5, again, I go knight e5, knight f e5, and then if you take on d7, then I take back with the knight, my king escape, and slowly, slowly, I'm going to push, uh, push the e-pawn, force it to sacrifice the knight for the, for the e-pawn, and then bishop knight versus king, which is a win. King d1, king d1 bishop h6. Bishop e2? Correct. Game over. Exactly, exactly. So that's the only square uh, with which I, from which I control both knights. What do you play? If you play here, I check. If you move the bishop, 
I, I move the king. I'm going to go wherever I want. You know, I, I, I'm going to go. You can go with the bishop wherever you want. I'm just staying on light squares. Whenever you move one of the knights, I check you on the other side. And I go always on e2. Fuck, fuck. Always on e2. Yeah? Simple. Sort of. <laughs> and this is it. White to move. And the first thing you have to uh, kind of uh, understand whenever you're solving studies is what result you're looking for. Yes, Arjun. <laughs> That's a good question. I think it is. Yeah, yeah. Generally, castling, whenever you see this type of setups uh, in studies, it, it's legal. So castle will be a legal move. I think you're right, Arjun. We are trying to draw this position. F7. All right, let's uh, go with F7. King takes F7. Game over, yeah? But I have a feeling F7 is correct, so we're going to leave it on the board. Okay, you're on the right track. Knight d3, a2, castle, king e6, rook a1, yeah? How to continue as black? Can we, uh, can we, can we improve the position? Can we try to uh, pose some problems? But if you go bishop d2, let's see how I'm going to... Um, to solve my problems. E4, yeah. Mm -hmm. Whoever said that, that, yeah, I think that's the, the way to go. E4 and um, after bishop d2, e4, and I think that's a blockade. You cannot bring your king, and you cannot uh, force my knight to move away. If you don't do that, then I think the position is quite easily draw. I'm just going to bring my king, king f2, etc, etc. Correct. Black sh white should play e4, right? Black should play e4. Otherwise, if you allow me to play e4 as white, again, it's going to be a blockade. So black has to go e4. Knight b4. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Knight takes a2. Bishop g7, yes. And what now? Good calculation so far. I don't know. I'm obviously threatening bishop takes b2 and rook takes a2. If you go b3, I think I'm just moving my rook and then you have to move your rook and then I take on a2 and that's it. Yeah, rook and bishop versus rook. If you manage to exchange the last, uh, the last pair of uh, pawns, it's a draw. But if you don't, then it's not. If, we, if, we, if black manages to save a pair of uh, pawns, then he's going to be winning. Yeah. And what I noticed, and what I love about solving studies is that, is that it definitely increases my resilience in practical play as well. Because you're always looking for artistic way, ways out, out of danger. It helps a lot. So if, you've ever, uh, if you're ever like training for a specific tournament or if you're just in training camp for, for an event, then uh, I think in 
the inclusion of studies is, is extremely important in your training routine. Well, I mean, if you're going to guess every single move, sure, you're going to find a solution at some point, but that's what I mean by, by forcing yourself to actually try to find it from point A to point B without guessing. Because when you solve it by yourself, you're going to have to look in the book for the solution, yeah? And then if you guess, then you just see the solution and you spoil the whole exercise for yourself. Yeah, King G2 is the move. Bishop takes B2. What now? E3. E3. And it's blocked, yeah? It's a fortress, yeah. Well, depending on where he goes. If he tries to go this way, then we can just keep the rook on the second rank, yeah? There's no way he can invade with the king. If he tries to go this way, then right now we have to uh, be careful of his intrusion via d5, c4. So I think right now we can just simply move our king. Yeah? And there is no way he can get out of it. That's it. Quite logical, yeah? You see, um, the common denominator in these in, in this studies is that towards the end, there was not a, not a lot to calculate, but rather to uh, create a certain defensive pattern. Yeah? And understand it. 